When you signed on for Saw 3, did you have any idea of where your character was going to go? No, I was just happy to be doing anything in a Saw movie or anywhere else. Was there anything in your contract um, forcing you to stay on just in case for more? Um, that's a good question because I think later they did say, you know, we for other roles and stuff, we have you for the first movie, the second movie, the third movie at this price or whatever. And I don't really remember, to tell you the truth. I think I just signed whatever they wanted me to sign, if anything. I would imagine, especially yeah. with such a big series. Were you a fan of the of the franchise before you had even signed on? I'm not a horror fan, but, you know, my friends were the producers, and, yeah, I was definitely very excited for them. Oh, you were friendly with the producers mm -hmm. beforehand? Mm -hmm. How do you know them? Well, I was engaged to Mark Berg. Oh. Yeah. So. That, that would do it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Jill's gone on uh, quite a journey through the films. Mm -hmm. Do you have like any specific moment in her in her time in the movies that you like the best? Yeah, when I lost the baby, it was the most cathartic for me. Yeah, yeah it's a very profound moment. It was yeah, shocking. Yeah, that was uh, it was pretty deep. So I hear you're in uh, this round a lot more than the past films. That's what I so hear. So how too. how much more of her can we expect? I never know without seeing the film how much is going to end up on the screen. So it's definitely a big part, and I'm um, hoping that it's really big, you know. But it's uh, it's a great role, and I'm sure the movie is going to be incredible. So I'm very excited to see it. Were you on the set most of the shoot? Yeah, yeah, I was there. I was in and out. And what was it like being on set, especially for something like this, like a, a really terrifying horror movie where people are stuck in traps all the time? Is there ever any time to break character and just laugh a little? Oh, all the time. Yeah. I mean, we're not... I'm intensely involved in my scene before and during, but then there's a lot of downtime. You know, it's a movie business, and you've got hours and hours and hours of, of nothing to do but hang out and chat. So, yeah, it's... it's the set's always amazing, you know, the people are great, we know everybody, and people are coming to visit, and it's just it's a big party. Yeah, unless you're getting chopped up, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and most of the crew has stayed the same from beginning to end, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the crew has stayed the same from from at least the second Saw movie, because the first one they filmed in L.A., and then they moved to Toronto. So, um, yeah, it's like old home week and family, and it's just, it's great. Everyone's amazing, and, you know, they do our, their best to make us feel at home and treat us, you know, really, really well. So it's very nice. We get spoiled, for sure, from the Saw sets. So that's interesting, too, because the, the crew stays the same, but then you kind of get a different director all the time. Not really. We've only had, since I've been there, there's only been Darren, yeah. David, and Kevin. So, so three, and we, you know, Darren was pretty well, you know, brought into the family, into the fold, so to speak, very quickly. So we got to know him very well, and he had written, you know, too. And, um, and then we knew David Hackle because he was, you know, the set designer. So we knew him very well. So when he got an opportunity to direct, that just kind of made sense. And the same with Kevin. He had been on every movie since the first one. I believe first or second and uh, he had been editing so it's not like they ran out and got somebody and said okay you've never directed before come direct a Saw movie it was like no we trust you you've paid your dues in a way and now we're going to give you this incredible opportunity that you may never get otherwise so how amazing is that and in a way it's probably great to have someone who is part of the franchise in another capacity than stepping behind the lens they got yeah. a different eye for the whole thing absolutely so it works out quite well it does. so what was beyond the director now, what was it like shooting the 3D? Was there anything from an actor's perspective that was entirely different? Yeah, I mean, the cameras were huge and uh, they were always around. I mean, just sometimes you don't notice the cameras because they're just, you know, here and there or whatever, but these were really large and, you know, sometimes there were little glitches and they had to send away to Germany or wherever they were getting the cameras and it was a big deal. Um, and, you know, the crew was learning as they went along, and it was all brand new, and it just it took hours for every setup, a lot longer than we were used to. And uh, occasionally, you know, the director would say, hey, do this or do that, because it'll look better in 3D or change the way you're moving or looking or whatever. But other than that, it was pretty much the same. So were a lot of the movements, like, I don't know, like, reach your hand toward the camera, mm -hmm. a lot of things flying at the camera? Um, I don't think there were a lot of things flying at the camera, but they did have us kind of reach differently occasionally here or there so yeah stuff like that and what about the set design too because a lot of the great thing about 3d is it it gives the the set and the location much more depth 
Is there a lot more attention paid to that? Um, I think they've always paid a lot of attention to the sets on, on Saw because the fans are so relentless, you know. I mean, they notice everything about every picture and every scene, and you just can't have anything go wrong in that department. So, I mean, they have a lot of really talented people at what they do, and um, every time it was very thought out really, really well, for sure. Speaking of the fans, uh, how has it been here at Comic-Con? I know you were just signing for quite a while. I imagine everyone came out full force. Yeah, the fans were great. They always are. And it was really fun having, you know, Carrie part of our team now. And um, Costas and I have gotten kind of used to doing this, but it was really different having Carrie with us. And, you know, almost felt, invi felt invisible because everyone's so excited to see him as they should be. And uh, having Kevin with us was great, and the fans are always just amazing, and you know they were excited to see all of us for sure, and I'm really, really happy to see them too, so that was great. Feel free to stop me if I get into spoiler territory, I don't want to ruin anything, but Carrie, I'm assuming he's back in flashback mode? Um, I can't really say that, but he's back, yeah, so it's very cool. That's a nice way to tie in to the yes, beginning. Yes, bookend, yeah, the whole series, it really... It only makes sense that Saw would do something like that, you know? It's just been great. Again, te kind of getting into spoiler territory, but not really because it's in the trailer, but you yourself this time find yourself in a trap? Um, I'm, I can't really say if it's a trap or not, but what you see uh, is what you get. You there, could, there could be something else going on there that we don't know about. We just never know, do we? <laughs> <laughs> so are there any traps from, you know, all throughout the series that kind of stick with you and maybe creep you out a little? Um, you know, I try not to think too hard about the traps. I mean, I don't even, there are, but why even go there? It's not, for me, it's not the most important part of Saw that, you know, brings me to my knees. It's the other things. So, yeah, the traps are great for a lot of the, the fans that love that sort of thing. But for me, it's more the message behind it, which is appreciate your life and, you know, be grateful for what we have and, and think about what we're doing in every moment and are we living our life the best we could be. Otherwise, Jigsaw could be around the corner <laughs> waiting to put us in a trap. It's funny, the horror franchise, especially something this brutal, having such like a sensible message. I think it is like the dichotomy of good versus evil. You know, he does these evil things, but yet his heart is really good. I mean, I believe that we all have good hearts and good souls it's just the decisions that we make you know that make us different so yeah I mean I have compassion for him obviously and I'm sure a lot of other people do too and that's why it's done so well that's for sure yeah. and how is it working with Tobin Tobin's amazing he really is he's a consummate human being and uh, he's a great actor he's so giving and loving and so devoted really to to the craft and and to whoever he's working with and to the franchise and to the movie that he's working on. And he's just, you know, trying to rewrite and make every scene as good as it possibly can be and trying to get as much time as he can with all of us to work things out and with the producers to discuss things. And he's just such an integral part of the whole series, you know. And it only makes sense that he's become a big star because of this. Yeah. yeah so. Is there anything about his character that kind of represents who he is really? I mean, it's not, and most people would take that as like an insult because he's, uh, he's a slasher in this movie, but John, I mean, he, he's a good guy and you really feel yeah. it a lot throughout the series. Yeah, you do feel that he was, you know, given cancer and he really had to sort of reflect on his life and, and, uh, and then he wants to give everyone else the opportunity to reflect as well. His way of doing it is a little bit sort of unusual but that's what he's that's what he's got in his mind so he wants to do it in that way and at the same time in real life I don't know him that well we're neighbors and we're friends but I'm sure you'd have to talk to his wife about that I think he does <laughs> probably have a lot of compassion in his heart as does John Kramer he he is compassionate I mean He's compassionate for the people that were getting screwed by the insurance companies. He's compassionate for the guy that, you know, killed Jeff's kid and that still doesn't feel that he's forgiven. You know, he does have compassion, maybe not in the way that we're used to seeing it, but I do believe he's a great man. So we've been hearing a lot that Saw 3D is the last one, but it's hard to believe a little bit, especially because, you know, you got a huge fan base here if this does well. 
kind of makes sense to keep going. So, which what are you thinking now? I am sure that this is the last Saw movie in this series, and um, that's all that I really am allowed to say. Because if I even said the slightest bit of anything else, I'd be put in a trap and probably get killed, you know. So I'm sad to see it go, and I'm sad as an actor, and I'm sad as a fan. But all great things have to come to an end, and I'm sure that these guys will go off to do other great things in their lifetime, and the writers and directors and producers, and definitely Lionsgate, have other incredible ideas stored up, so I'm sure. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm only guessing that they're creative people, so there'll be other things. And so what's next for you? I mean, I know you just said you're not really into the whole horror genre per se, but you were just in Chain Letter too, weren't you? Which just came yeah. out last weekend, I believe. Yeah. Well, you know, at my age in Hollywood, to be working at all is almost a miracle, honestly. And, um, you know, it's it's a it's sort of a, um, a career that's geared more towards, you know, 20-year-olds. I mean, Desperate Housewives did give a lot of 40-year-olds more more opportunity, but there's, it's not like I'm, you know, fielding, well, I, I do have, do have some possibilities for things that are good that are coming up, but, you know, I, I just want to do good work, and um, I hope to continue acting, and I hope that the fans want to see more of me, but we just never know in life, and right now, you know, I do have a few possibilities for things that are in my future, and I hope something great falls in my lap, and um, that's what I'm going to hope for. Anything in particular you could share? Any, uh, I don't know, even like a type of genre you're drawn, you're, uh, drawn to? I love comedy. I would love, you know, I did a, a play called It's Just Sex, and I would love to, to follow that play to New York in a few years when my kids are grown. Um, I have a feeling that that play is really going to be a big hit. So that's something that kind of is tempting for me to, to go on stage. You know, I love that, that instant gratification. I love to hear people laugh. I mean, when we did that play for four months, it was just the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. To see people for 90 minutes with no intermission just falling off their chairs nonstop laughter. I mean, that's, that's incredible. And uh, that's what I like to do. I like to make people laugh. I like to make people cry. And like the Saw movies do, I like to make people think. So if I can be any part of that, then my job is done and I'm, I'm a happy camper. Where was that play? In Studio City. Oh, great. Yeah. And when did you do that? Um, I did it about a year ago. And is there some talk about it maybe coming to New York? Yeah, for uh -huh. sure. And you'd go with it, I'm assuming. Yeah, well, I'm hoping to. Yeah, the producers are really good friends of mine, and uh, yeah, you never know what, what's in the future, especially the life of an actor. You just never know what tomorrow may hold. So more than anything else, it's kind of living in the unknown, but trusting that great things are around the corner. And in terms of film, do you have anything else on the schedule? I do have some possibilities for for some things, you know, Dion Taylor, the director of Chain Letter, has some ideas for me, and I'm sure some other directors and producers do as well, or maybe if they didn't, when they see this, they will. So, you never know. You definitely have a big fan base from this, so I'm sure there'll be a lot of support. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You too.